lot of people, when they focus on the breath, want to be with the pure sensation of the breath, without any mental images, without any words. But these things are intimately tied together. If you're not clear about the image you're holding in mind about the breath, it goes underground and has an impact on the way you're seeing things, what seems to be a direct and totally pure experience of the breath. is actually not. And if you're not clear about the image, if you're not clear about the perception, you don't know what impact it's having. This is why we consciously think about the breath. And bring some new perceptions to bear. The idea that the breath is an energy throughout the body is not one that's really normal in Western culture. And I know a lot of people have said it's impossible. They think, okay, breath has to be the air coming in and out of the lungs. And when you talk about the breath and the nerves of the breath and the blood vessels, they say, that's unscientific because air doesn't go down there. But that's a misperception. Because when we talk about the breath, we're talking about the energy. And there has to be energy in your nerves, there has to be energy in your blood vessels, otherwise you wouldn't be alive. And the parts of the body that you feel right now you wouldn't be able to feel. It's the breath that allows you to sense that you're sitting here with a body, and you know where it is. You know where the various parts are. Now some of us, as we get to know the body as we feel it from within, begin to realize that some of the parts don't seem to be connected. And one of the exercises you can do as you're getting more familiar with the body is figuring out, okay, where is your arm in relationship to your chest? Where are your legs in relationship to the hips? Where is the front of the body in relationship to the back? And instead of imposing the idea of what it looks like from the outside on your internal sensations, try to explore where your internal sensations are right now. And as you explore them, gradually they come back into kind of an alignment. This is a useful process. It gets you in touch with the body. And you begin to see okay, your perceptions play a role. Because after all, it's the interaction among fabrications, bodily fabrication, verbal fabrication, mental fabrication, that you understand on the one hand the extent to which you are fabricating things right now. And when you're in touch with fabrications, you're very close to ignorance. And John Sawad used to make a lot of this point. He said, if you want to see where your ignorance is, look at your fabrications, because they're right together. So we want to get really, really familiar with the fabrications going on here. And as you bring more knowledge to the fabrications, you begin to get a sense of where your ignorance was. So experiment with different perceptions to see what impact they have on the way you experience the breath, the kind of feelings that come up. And also look into the stories you're telling yourself about yourself sitting here meditating, what's going on in the mind, because those have a huge impact as well. When I was first staying with a John Fuyang, I'd be meditating up alone on the mountain, sometimes for days without really having much contact with anybody. And I get really frustrated with myself. Old stories from grade school, high school, college would come up. Things in the family, things that happened between me and my friends. And I was real frustrated. I wanted these things to go away. I wanted to focus on the breath. But I began to realize that a lot of these issues were issues that were unresolved, largely because I was looking at them in the wrong way. Sometimes I would talk them over with John Fuang, and he'd have some interesting insights based on karma. And sometimes he'd look at me and he'd realize, okay, this was a Western problem that a Western person had to solve. But the basic message was there. 
You can take the Buddhist teachings on karma, you can take the Buddhist teachings on rebirth, you can take the Buddhist teachings on experience in general, and use those to recast your stories of who you are and where you come from, what's happened in the past. And that way you can settle a lot of issues. So if you want, think about a John Fuang talking to you when an issue comes up, or when the members of the committee are getting obstreperous, how would he describe the, the story? How would he describe the issue? How would he sort things out among them? And John Fuang does seem to be the one to settle things. Well, think of the, uh, the John that you most respect, or the person in the Pali County you most respect. Add that to your committee. In this way, you're dealing with all, all three types of fabrication, and you're using them with skill, instead of the old way, which is just willy-nilly. We fabricate things sometimes simply because we're bored. There's that story of the, the Brahmas, who, as the universe is beginning to reform, just for a lark. So what does this taste like? They see this film developing on the, on the ocean of the world. They taste it with their fingers. Take a finger, stick a finger into the film, taste it, and this tastes really good. It tastes like ghee mixed with honey. And they fall on it. And at first it's just a lark, but then they become earnest. And as a result, their luminosity disappears. And they fall to a lower realm. That's the way it is with a lot of us. It's something starts out as, well, just do this for a lark, and then it takes over. So you have to be careful about these fabrications, because the wandering on that we do in samsara gets blown around just by whims sometimes, like the old line about the the Tsar of Russia who ruled with a whim of iron. In other words, just whatever came into his head, that's what he did, and insisted on its being that way. Well, the mind is a lot like that. Random ideas come in, and all of a sudden they, they take your fancy and just go with them. And then they take over. They become more and more ironclad. And then you find yourself having to live with the results of those whims for sometimes a long, long time. So you have to be careful about the directions you choose, how you fabricate things. The Buddha is saying basically we suffer because we do all of this wandering around, all of this fabrication out of ignorance. But if you can start learning how to do it with knowledge. And the knowledge is not just the fact that you're aware of it, but you try to look at these things in terms of where is the stress? What's causing the stress? What can you do to put in the stress? If there's a way of thinking that's weighing you down, you can learn how to think about that topic in a different way. Or you may decide that the topic isn't worth thinking about at all. Because when stress comes, our immediate reaction is that we want to run away or push it away. But the Buddha says, no, comprehend it as clinging aggregates, which is not the first thought that usually comes to our mind. But ask yourself, where is the clinging? What are you feeding on here? Is it a form? Is it an image that you're holding in mind? Is it a feeling? Is it a perception? Is it a fabrication? Is it just the fact of consciousness? How are you feeding on these things? Now, why do you want to feed on them? What is it about them that you like? Where is their allure? Can you step back enough from that to see where their drawbacks are? Can you see when you feed and when you don't? 
This is one of the reasons why we look at inconstancies, just to see the rise and fall in the level of stress. And you can ask yourself, okay, when the stress level in the mind goes up, what were the perceptions that brought it up? What were the feelings? What were the thought constructs? The perceptions usually are the big ones because they're quick and they have an immediate impact. They deal with your lizard brain level. So again, as we're working with the breath and becoming sensitive to how our perceptions shape our sense of who we are and what we're doing right now and what we're dealing with right now, you get more and more sensitive to these little images as they come and go in the mind. What happens when you drop an image that raised the level of stress? And as you're involved in that particular project, you don't really have to think too much about developing the path because you're working on right view right there, and you're concentrated and you're mindful, and you're engaged in the right effort. Whatever is unskillful, you let it drop. Whatever is skillful, you, you develop it. All of these things are happening right there. The Johns like to make this point. It's not like you do some comprehension work on stress and then you do some abandoning work on the, the cause or some developing work on the path. These things all happen together. But it's working with a breath that gives you the, the tether to the present moment, and the tether to that level of mind where you can see how these fabrications happen. And as you get more and more sensitive, and you bring that issue of where is the stress and what can be done to put an end to it. That's called fabricating with knowledge as opposed to ignorance, because we're applying appropriate attention, we're applying the right framework to this fabrication. That's what the Ajayans keep reminding us, and that's why it's good to have the, the voices or the attitudes of the Ajayans in your head as part of the member of the committee. They keep bringing you back to these questions. Where is the stress? What are you doing to cause it? If you're like the idea that you're causing the stress, you say, well, what is it in the mind that's causing it? What makes it go up? What makes it go down? Look for the perceptions and the other fabrications, because those are the culprits. And one of the reasons we work on concentration is, as the Buddha said, the levels of concentration all the way up through the Dimension of nothingness are perception attainments. You have to learn how to hold on to a perception that you find congenial, that helps you to settle down. And then they, these perceptions get more and more refined. And when you've learned how to hold a perception in mind for a long time, then you get a lot more sensitive to little whispers of perception that come in and want to change. So when you're focusing on the breath, Realize, okay, you're going to be using perceptions to stay focused. Just learn how to be very, very sensitive to what they are. And learn how to play with them so you can develop even more sensitivity. Because it's in that realization that you can really choose which perceptions you're going to apply. That's how karma applies to the present moment. And that realization that you do have choices right now can open a lot of things up in the mind. Otherwise, you just run by your old ironclad ways of doing things. Whatever ways you've been driving yourself crazy in the past, you're going to continue to do it. But you might decide, I've had enough of that. You want to see what other possibilities there are. This is one of one of the reasons why it's good that there is no specific role for us in life, that there's some meaning that's been assigned to us. We get to assign meaning ourselves. And if we decide that the meaning is going to be freedom, and stick with that, we can make a huge difference. <laughs>